Hey there chemists, welcome to another exciting lesson for the organic chemistry unit. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about what are called uh, branched alkanes. Um, now everything that we've looked at up until this point is considered a straight chain alkane, alkene, or alkyne. Straight chain meaning all of it is just in a straight line. However, there are things called branched alkanes, and I want to give you just a quick example to show you why it's important um, that we know how to name these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw two molecules for you here. And then what we're going to do is take a look at the molecular formula for both and talk about the properties of both. So the first molecule that I want to draw is this. Okay, and then we'll fill in our H's. And as you can see, this is a general straight chain alkane, so we know how to name this one, right? So um, just looking at this, our molecular formula is C4H10, um, okay? We would name this molecule uh, butane, okay? And again, it belongs to the alkane family. It has all single bonds. I don't want to put a actually a line there because I don't want it to start looking like double bonds, but it has all single bonds here, okay, and we have our four carbons. Now, if I were to draw something like this, okay, and we fill in our hydrogens, notice that all of these still have just single bonds. However, this is no longer in a straight chain. Now, this molecule, given the molecular formula of C4H10 is by just seeing that molecular formula, we think it's the same thing as butane, right? It's an alkane, it has four carbons, 10 hydrogens, it's butane. However, these two substances have very, very different properties. Now, this molecule right here, butane, the general butane is considered nonpolar whereas this molecule over here is polar. And remember that the polarity kind of impacts a lot of things. It impacts the ability to dissolve. It impacts the ability, um, or I'm sorry, the temperature at which it boils and melts and all of that stuff. And so these two molecules, although they have the same molecular formula, have different structures. And because they have different structures, these two molecules are gonna have different properties and have to be named differently. And so our question really is, how do we name this molecule over here so that it does not have the same name as butane? And so what I would thought I would do here, because there's a lot of long lists of rules here, what I thought we could do is we could name, um, or I would, I would go through the rules with each of you, or I'm going to type through it. I left the rules typed on this sheet. But we're going to go through them all together, and then we're going to do a bunch of examples. Um, I didn't think it was worth you having to write all these out, so I didn't want you to waste the time doing that. But that doesn't mean that you can passively sit back and learn. You really need to practice these rules in order to get good at naming these branched alkanes. So let's go ahead and take a look at our rules here. I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in so that we're nice and close. Okay. And so as we're naming branched alkanes, step one is to find the parent chain. And again, I'm gonna do this with you for probably most of these. So step one in red is to find the parent chain. Now our parent chain is our longest chain of continuous carbons. That means that it's the longest chain that I can follow along with without lifting my, mar or without lifting my marker or my pen or my pencil. So for example, on problem number one here, right, I have this one, two, three as a possibility, just in a different color to highlight the other possibilities because you do have to keep looking. You could do one, two, three, okay? Or you could do one, two, three. Any way we look at it, our parent chain is three carbons. Now, it does have a total of four carbons, but our parent chain has just three. It's the longest continuous chain that we've come up with. 
So I'm going to go ahead and erase these and I want to keep it in red because that's our step that we're on is finding our parent chain. So our parent chain is here. This is the parent chain. Okay, so my parent chain is three carbons and I'm just gonna go ahead and label that here. Parent chain equals three carbons. Okay, next number the parent chain so that the branch, the branch meaning the remaining carbons um, is at the lowest possible carbon number. Now you can have more than one branch and if that's the case, you still want those branches to fall at the lowest possible sum of numbers. Now, we'll get into that when we get to a more complex molecule, but for now, let's go ahead and number our branches so that the, uh, we are at the lowest possible carbon number. Now, our branch is this one right here, okay? And we wanna go ahead and number our molecules. Um, when we do that, I like to do it both ways just to show you, so you can number it from left to right or right to left. So that's one, two, three, or one, two, three. Now, however we label this, whichever direction we decide to go, our branch falls at carbon number two. Because of that, we're just gonna keep it simple. We're gonna just leave it as reading it left to right. That's what our brain wants to do. But just note that you could do it from right to left as well. Step three is to name my branch or branches. Count the number of carbons and add YL to the ending. So you're going to still be using reference table P, but instead of using the ending of A-N-E, E-N-E, or Y-N-E, we're going to be using O or YL at the end. So we're going to name our branches. Okay, so our branch right here has one carbon. The prefix for one carbon is meth. And the ending is now ol. So we end up with methyl. Okay, our branch name is methyl. One carbon ends in YL. Step four, designate the location of the branch by putting a number before the name of the parent chain. Okay, so this is a little bit confusing the way that it's worded. Um, but let's go ahead and keep reading because I think we might be at almost a stopping point for this example. And so typically let's do this in green. But before we do that, I do want to go ahead and read the rest of these. So if there are the same number, actually, you know what I want to say, designate the location of the branch by putting a number, a number dash before, okay, number dash branch name, let's add that in there, before the name of the parent chain. That makes more sense. You'll see why. All right, if there are two of the same type of branch, so in this case, we, do, we don't even have to look at rule five because we're not there yet. Um, number six, if there is more than one branch, again, we don't have to look at that yet. So number seven is to piece it all together. So step four is really our last step that we're gonna follow for here. Designate the location of the branch by putting a number before the branch name. So we located our branch to be at location two. So this becomes two dash methyl. And so to bring this all together into a final name, the final name is two dash methyl and our parent chain, which I should have named, we should always name right at the very beginning, has three carbons, prop, and it's an alkane, so it ends in a and E still, so two methyl, and the name is propane, two methyl propane. Okay, so that's example one. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more examples together. Okay, step one, find our parent chain. Again, longest chain of continuous carbons. So again, I'm gonna do a couple different options here to see what's going on. So my first option is one, two, three. My second option is uh, one, two, three, four. I also have one, two, three going the other direction. I have one, two, three, four going this direction. So it looks like our longest possible chain is four. I'm gonna go ahead and erase all those lines and we're gonna select one of those four to be our parent chain. So we have one, two, 
three, four. And let's go ahead and actually name that parent chain now so that it's done. So the parent chain name here is going to be four prefix, which is but. And it's an alkane, so it's butane. Okay, step two, let's go ahead and number the parent chain so that the branch is at the lowest possible number. So let's go ahead and number. I think there's two different ways to number it from left to right and right to left. So we have one, two, three, four, or let me do this in a different color. We could number it one, two, three, four. Now, in the orange, our branch falls at carbon two. In the yellow, our branch falls at carbon three. So we want to keep it so that it's at the lowest possible number. So we're going to go ahead and keep the yellow, or I'm sorry, the orange naming scheme here. Let me go ahead and get rid of these yellow numbers if I can. Oh, I was like, there we go. All right, so now that it's numbered, we want to go ahead and, again, make sure that we've now located our branch. It's at carbon two, and we're going to move on to step three, which is going to be to name your branch. Now, again, my branch right here is one carbon. One carbon is meth, and again, our branches end in ol. and again, our numbering of that branch is going to be two methyl. So our name of our molecule, let's piece it all together, is 2-methylbutane. Awesome. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to our next example. Okay, we want to go ahead and find our parent chain. So this one, there are um, a couple of options here. So first one is reading straight across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In orange, our second option, one, two, three, four, five, six. And in yellow, our third option, one, two, three, four, five, six. So red ends up being our longest option. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate these. And we're going to go ahead and give our parent chain a name. So again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The prefix for seven is hept, and it's an alkane, so it's heptane. Okay, next thing we want to do is number it so our branch falls at the lowest possible. So if we number from left to right, I'm not going to write it out both ways this time, so just follow along. If we number from left to right, it would be one, two, three, four. If we number it from right to left, our branch would be at one, two, three, four. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to number it from left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Next step, let's name our branch. In this case, our branch is no longer one carbon. It has two carbons. Our prefix for two carbons is F. And again, it's a branch, so it ends in O. Y, L. Next step, we again still have only one branch here, so we're going to skip five and six, and we're going to uh, go, or I'm sorry, we're going to do four, skip five and six, and, and piece it all together. Our branch is at four, so it becomes four dash ethyl, and our final name is four dash ethyl um, heptane. All right, let's try to get through just a couple more examples here, so I know it's going to be a little bit long. Um, but again, practice makes perfect with these. Let's find our parent chain. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm just going to keep that number here just so I remember. And in orange, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and in yellow, we have one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. And in green, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. And in blue, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, it looks like there's still one more option I could do, but it looks like our longest is going to be seven. So let's just go ahead and erase all of the other options here. And let's go ahead and make seven our parent name. So as I'm filling this parent chain in, again, seven is going to give us hept and aim because it is an alkane. And with the branches in this case, or I'm sorry, we want to number our branches so that, uh, or number our parent chain so the branches fall at the lowest possible numbers. Now, hear me out. Okay, when we have more than one chain, okay, and I'm going to put this over here next to the notes. So multiple chains, we want to have um, the lowest sum of branches, okay? So that means that if I label this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to find my sum of my branches, I have a branch at four and five, the sum equals nine. Or if I label it in the next or the opposite direction, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, my branches now fall at three and four for a sum of seven. So because labeling from um, from right to left gives us a lower sum of branches, we want to give this the parent chain, or this is how we want to number our parent chain. So I'm going to go ahead and erase um, both of those, and we'll just number it officially, okay, in, in orange, but right now we're going to have to number, number it for, um, from right to left. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we want to name our branches. So we have two branches in this case, exciting. So we're going to go ahead and we have a branch of two, which is ethyl, and we have a branch of one, which is methyl. And from there, we want to go ahead and put a number in front of them. So we have three dash ethyl, four dash methyl. Now, we still have some other steps here that we need to look at. So for step five, if there are two of the same type of branch, not applicable to this problem. So let's see step six. If there is more than one type of branch, when we're naming them, we're going to list them alphabetically. So when we're naming this, it's not going to be based on which one actually falls first. It's alphabetical. So E comes before M, which does happen to work out here also in terms of numbers. But now let's piece it all together. Our final name is 3-ethyl-4-methyl-heptane. Okay, or you can skip that last dash in between methyl and heptane, okay? Awesome job, everybody. Let's do um, one more example, and we'll see if we can get an example where we have the same. Actually, let's skip one and do the next one down so that we have the same type of branches so I can show you how we would name that. All right, so for our, we're going to skip down to this one, parent chain. Just looking at this, you can pretty much tell right off the bat what's the parent chain. But again, I'll show you. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We also have one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty much any way you go, it's going to be maximum of seven. So I'm going to go ahead and box that off. Name our parent chain, which is heptane. Okay. And now we want to go through and uh, number our parent chain so our branches fall at the lowest possible number. Again, sum. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We would have two branches at three, so that would be six plus a branch at five, which is going to be a, a sum of 11. Or if we were to do this in yellow, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one branch at three, two branches at five for a sum of 13. So it works out in this case that we're going to number it like we did in orange from left to right. And we're going to go ahead and now um, name our branches. So when we're naming our branches, again, we have meth 
because it has one carbon, methyl. Our second branch, again, is also methyl. And our third branch is also methyl. So now we have to designate, designate their numbers, okay? So we're gonna designate those numbers. We have three methyl, three methyl, and five methyl. And when we're looking at step five, it tells us if there are two of the same type of branch, indicate that there are two by adding a dye in front of the name of the branch. Also, be sure to include both locations. So for example, if I were to have two methyl branches and they're located at carbons three and four, the name would be three comma four dimethyl. Now, if I have three branches, our prefix becomes tri. So our name here is going to be, okay, three comma three comma five dash trimethyl heptane. All right, everybody, we're gonna pause here because this is already long. We're gonna do lots more practice in class. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.